uh, growing up in the way back time, in our household, jokes were really common. Teasing was pretty common, but jokes were really common. Somebody was always telling a joke. You know, there were blonde jokes, there were Polak jokes, there were uh, jokes about the Pope. I mean, there, there were jokes about everything, you know, and sometimes they'd be, you know, all these different groups walk in a bar and, you know, name them off and they, they kind of hit everybody. They kind of hit everybody. And they were funny and, you know, it seemed to me people didn't take offense. Um, I, I've kind of watched this change where I don't, I don't see that as being acceptable anymore. There's something, um, you know, we're all kind of walking our tippy toes afraid to offend somebody and say something that isn't politically correct. And so I think we've just stepped back from that so far that I don't, I don't really see, and maybe it's just in my uh, group of people I encounter, but I don't, I don't see a lot of joke telling. You know, um, blonde jokes were really, really popular, and um, I never took offense. I'm blonde, by the way. I never took offense to them. Oftentimes, they were about large-breasted women, you know, and I'm not a large-breasted woman. And so I'd hear those jokes, and I thought they were funny. I just laughed with everybody else. Um, an interesting thing happened when I was in Eugene at, at U of O. I was working at Kaufman's. Uh, clothing store and somebody made a blonde joke and this woman uh, said to me aren't you offended by that joke and I said no I think it's funny I think it's, it's hilarious you know and by the way she was not blonde um, she had dyed hair dark dyed hair and about an inch long um, gray roots so her natural color I think then would have been gray she definitely was not a blonde had not been a blonde but she was very much prompting me to be offended by that blonde joke, and I wasn't. Um, and, and that's what I kind of wonder now is I wonder if people like her, you know, have prompted us to be offended by, by silliness, you know, absolute silliness, just jokes, just playing around, not intended to be malicious at all. And, and people didn't used to take them that way. Um, an, another interesting uh, memory, I lived in Portland and I worked at an antique shop there. There was a black gentleman who used to come in and he was always seeking black memorabilia, black statues. I mean, what we would now call, I think most people would call very offensive. And I remember asking him why he collected those. I thought, gosh, is he just wanting to get them all off the market so they're not seen and, you know, because he thinks they're so horrible. And he told me, he and he was very confident, very, very confident man. He told me, he said he thought they were funny. They reflected a time in our society that was so ridiculous. And he wasn't offended by them. He did not take offense because he, it didn't apply to him, just like me being a blonde. He, he was not the stereotypical um, over- um, you know, emphasized being. He was confident in himself, a very successful man, and he was a very serious collector. He, you know, he, he had a, a, a impressive collection. But it, it, it makes me think now, you know, I don't know who these powers that be that decide what's politically correct and what isn't. I don't know who these high and mighty people are, but I kind of think they ought to get off their high and mighty horses and learn to take a joke. First of all, um, you know, if you can't take a joke, you're going to have a tough time in society. You, you just are. And, and I think you're also not going to have as much fun because if you can take a joke, you can give a joke. And if you can't do either, you're kind of missing out. And I think as a society, we've listened to these high and mighty people um, tell us what we should be offended by. And, and you know, a little, maybe instead of PC, we need to be CS and, and get a little common sense going. You know, and common sense, you know, somebody can say blonde jokes about me all day long or to me and about me all day long. I don't care. I really don't care. Um, you know, I will have to say when my husband Bill and I first started dating in one of our very early dates, first or second date, he, I think it was probably second date, we were driving around and he, he made some comments that was far beyond my 
a realm of knowledge. I didn't know what he was talking about. And he was very bright, by the way, very, very bright. I knew in two seconds, this guy was really bright and would always be much, much smarter than me in just about everything. Um, and so he made this joke and, or he, he made a comment and it was, it was a joke uh, towards me. It wasn't, it wasn't mean. He wasn't trying to be mean and it wasn't this crude, but basically what I heard was, you're not that smart. That's what I heard. That wasn't what he said, but that's what I heard. And that's how I took it. And it really hurt my feelings. It really hurt my feelings. And we talked about it a lot. And, you know, to be honest, if that, if he'd said that, you know, probably even a month later, I would have just laughed. I, I would not have taken offense by it. But, but because it was so early in our relationship, I, I was sensitive about that. I knew I would never be as smart as he and could never um, even converse in the way he could converse about a lot of topics. And so I was sensitive about that. And that's why it got to me. And it was true. It was an absolute truth. So I think when we are overly sensitive about, you know, silliness, absolute silliness, um, we need to examine ourselves. We need to look at ourselves and, and forget about the high and mighty, um, politically correct people who are telling us what we must think and how we must react. Forget about them. You know, let's, let's just fire them because I don't know who they are. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but they need to get off their high and mighty horses and, um, kind of maybe learn to take a joke. Um, so I guess my point is what I feel like and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm the only one who thinks this, but I kind of feel like we are all having to walk around on our tippy toes because we're afraid of saying something that some somebody might have been told they're supposed to be offended by, even if they genuinely would not be, if it didn't apply to them, if it was absolute silliness. And so, and I think we get kind of bound up or kind of hinky when we can't just relax and and enjoy silliness. I think silliness and laughter is a really, really powerful thing. And, you know, I think, I think we should reclaim that. I think we should not nothing offensive, of course, but I think we should be able to make and take jokes. Um, I think it's a sad commentary on, um, young, you know, black people, people of color, that they are told and it's instilled in them that they need to be, um, they need to, you know, hold, they still need to hold um, bad, bad feelings about what happened generations ago, generations ago. And boy, there were bad things that happened. There were incredible wrongdoings. But what I, I so much believe is if you treat someone like a victim, they will be a victim. And that is such a that's a horrible thing to put on somebody, a horrible, horrible thing, because you're not allowing them to blossom and grow and be, you know, a strong, you're not allowing them to be them, gen, their genuine self. They are not the victims of generations past. And I think, I think it's a really ugly thing to put on a young child that they need to hold on to that. You know, they need to hold on to that because it doesn't help them. It doesn't help them. It doesn't, it doesn't lift them up to something better by, by dragging them down of, um, because of bad, bad things that happened in the past. It, it doesn't. I mean, I, I, anyway, um, I'm getting off my soapbox here. What, what I wish, I just wish, like I said, that we could lighten up, we could, um, you know, t make jokes and take jokes. Anybody can make a joke about me anytime, anytime. You know, I'm a big girl. I can, well, I, I'm not so big, uh, but so make a joke about me not being so big. I can take that too. I just think we need to kind of kick out some of the ridiculous politically correct stuff relax and let common sense back in our lives and world. You know, let's replace some of the PC with CS, common sense. Um, oh boy. You know, what? I probably can't say, oh boy, that's probably, you know, that's probably not something I can say. Um, maybe I can say, holy cow. Well, maybe I shouldn't say, holy cow, because Dwayne's cows down the road might be offended. But wait a minute. 
they won't be offended because cows still have common sense. They still have common sense because no high and mighty people told them or no high and mighty cows told them they needed to be offended if somebody said, holy cow. So I think we should at least be as, um, have a, at least as much common sense as cows do. And I think we need to just, just relax and, and, and enjoy life, enjoy life and be able to take and make jokes. So that's, that's my commentary for today. Take from it what you wish. And boy, if I offended somebody, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, get over it. Get over it. I'm not trying to be mean. I love you. I love you. I would, I would never try to um, be mean or hurt anybody's feelings. I would not do that. I'm trying, I want to lift people up. I want to lift them up from the past. And I think that is better common sense than um, hanging on to or her creating politically correct stuff that's a bunch of bunk. So, no bunk. I love you and I thank you for listening and let's let's try a little common sense. Goodbye.